In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have a unique feedback for each one of your drags in a drag and drop interaction. The drag and drop interaction built into Adobe Captivate is a great way to add interactivity to your e-learning. Unfortunately, it's a little limited with only a correct and an incorrect caption. If you want to have multiple different feedback items for all the distractors in that interaction, it's a little more challenging and that's what we're going to show you how to do today. Okay, so I've got everything set up on this first slide here. This is going to be a very simple, uh, potentially many to one drag and drop. So my drop target is going to be in the center here and all of these items around the outside will be my drag objects. I've set up a back and next button on this slide and I'm just going to show you that the next button is delayed in its appearance until 1.6 seconds. That's a tenth of a second after a drag and drop would uh, pause. So it's going to show up only if we get the answer successful or if we run out of tries. I also have an object on here that contains multiple captions for all the different scenarios of when I drag an object to the center of my drag and drop. So you can see here, for example, incorrect, that's the blue circle you drag to the center, try again, uh, and for all the different colors, plus a correct caption. So correct, you identified the green circle by dragging it into the center, click the next button to proceed because of course that will appear automatically once you get the answer correct. And then I'm also going to set up no more tries. So you've used up your attempts for this activity. You may wish to review this material again. I could do full remediation where I force them to go back to an earlier slide. But in this case, just the simple fact that we have a back button. Of course, these, uh, these folks can return uh, back to those earlier slides if they decide that's what they want to do. What we need to do, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a couple of variables. So I'm going to click on the project drop down menu and select variables. I'm going to create a variable called underscore max tries. And the reason I'm doing this as a variable is because of course it's a lot easier to change one variable's value. In this case, I'm going to set it to three. But if you decide that four is more appropriate for your situation or only two, that's fine too. So on the third try, they can't continue to use these drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I also need to keep track of the number of tries. So I'm going to create a variable called underscore number of tries. And its initial value will be zero. So we'll save that and we can go ahead and close the variables window. So let's start to build our drag and drop interaction. The easiest way, of course, is to use the drag and drop wizard. We'll select that from the interactions icon on your toolbar and choose drag and drop. So first thing we need to do is specify the drag sources by clicking on those objects. So the yellow, the green, the blue, the purple, red, orange, click next. Now let's identify the, the drop target. We'll select that. Next, and the correct answer is only when they drag the green circle into the white circle. So I'm just going to identify that and we'll get our captions. You'll see our submit button has appeared and I can go ahead and hit finish and I have a basic drag and drop now. Now, if you select the drop target, you'll see your drag and drop panel and some of the settings right there. We're not going to change anything here yet. We'll go into the actions tab and we will set the number of attempts actually to infinite attempts, not because we're going to give infinite attempts, but we just want to make that easy to manage. I'm not going to need a failure caption or a success caption, so I'm going to turn those off and I'm going to make this auto submit. So I'm just going to drag my submit button out into the scrap area so that it will automatically submit for me. I do need to, of course, 
select auto submit. And again, like I mentioned before, drag and drops will pause at 1.5 waiting for you to perform this interaction. So learners won't see the next button until they complete it, either running out of tries or getting the correct answer. So now what I need to do is I need to write an advanced action for all the different circumstances here. So if I drag the yellow to the white or the orange to the white, that way I can have truly unique feedback for each of these situations. So I'm going to click on the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. And the first one of these I'm going to call blue. We need to change the state of our captions item. So let's select change the state of our feedback captions to blue. We're also going to increment our number of tries variable by a value of one. And I'm actually going to move on to another tab because I need to do a conditional action there. But I am going to change the label for this first tab. So this is going to be when it is less than max tries. Now, when we've reached the maximum tries, of course, I could just simply create a conditional action where I say, if the variable number of tries, that's the one that keeps track, is equal to, and I could put in a literal value, three or four or two or whatever it would be, but this is where the advantage of max tries is, because if you decide that you're going to change the maximum number of tries. It's a lot easier to change the value of a variable than to change the literal value that's going to be in, you know, five or six different uh, drag and drop advanced actions. So we're going to choose variable and select max tries. So again, we can just check one against the other. And if it's equal to, we're going to change the state of our feedback captions to no more tries. And so that we prevent people from attempting to drag and drop any more items, we're going to disable all of those items. So I'm going to type in disable, drag blue, drag green, orange, purple, red, and yellow. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to save as an action, click OK. And to make this easy, because I literally need um, this same structure, this same advanced action for the remaining four incorrect drag and drops, uh, it's easy to do because I can just duplicate this action. And the only thing I need to change here is changing the state of my feedback caption to let's go with purple and I'll relabel this one purple and we can update that action. Click OK. Let's duplicate it again for red. Change the feedback caption to red. Update action and click OK. Again, all of this remains the same for each of them. So there's no changes required here. And we'll duplicate it once more. We'll call this orange. And we'll change that to the orange feedback caption. Update. OK. And we'll duplicate it one more time to make yellow. We'll change the caption to yellow and update that action. Click OK. Now, the, the final choice that we're going to make is for the green. Now, if they do the green on the last try, they still will get that out of try message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and change this to green. And I will change the feedback caption to the feedback for green. But again, if, they, if we're incrementing the number of tries by one, when it gets here, it's going to replace the green caption with the out of tries message. So the simple solution is for the correct answer, we're just going to delete the increment number of tries action. So I'm just going to delete that. 
And now, of course, I can update this action and click OK. And of course, we can now close the Advanced Actions window. So now to run this, how to get those to actually run when you drag these items over, we continue to have our drop target selected. We go over to Format and we go to Object Actions. Couple things we want to do. I don't want to accept multiple items into that drop target, so I'm going to uncheck Accept All. We'll keep the count at one. And if we're dragging a new item into it, we want it to not go back, but instead replace it with that item there. So now here's all of our drag possibilities. So all I need to do now is to assign my advanced action for each one of these to the appropriate drag action. So red for the first one, execute advanced actions, green, that's the correct answer. Execute advanced actions, purple. Execute advanced actions, blue. Do the same thing for orange. And last but not least, yellow. And that's it. So we click on OK. Now you may decide to include this as part of your quiz. So you can select include in quiz and assign a certain number of points to that. And you can also include uh, report answers. So you can actually give that information to your LMS as to which item was dragged. If you're going to allow learners to retake the quiz, you'll need to reset this slide back to its original condition. So what I would recommend that you do, and also if you're just simply allowing people to return to the slide, maybe after they've uh, learned what they needed to know about green circles, you'd need a little advanced action on enter of the slide to reset everything back to normal. So if I execute advanced actions and I can create a new advanced action, and we'll just click on the plus icon to create that new advanced action. And we'll call this on enter, and you could say slide one. And what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, because we did disable those buttons, those drag and drops, let's, uh, let's enable each of those. And we're also going to assign our number of tries variable back to zero so that we can try again. So I'm gonna save this as an action, click OK and click Close and make sure that my on enter advanced action is pointing at that particular advanced action. So I think we're good to test this out and see how it works. Let's preview in HTML5 in browser. So here we go, we can start our drag and drop. Let's try the yellow and the blue. And again, you can see we're getting unique feedback here. Let's get one more wrong. We'll drag the purple in. Oh, I've used up my attempts for this activity. You may wish to review this material again. So I could go back and learn that material again. Let's reset this, let's refresh it. And we'll try it now. We'll do the yellow. That's yellow. Let's get it right this time. Green. Correct. You've identified the green circle by dragging it into the center. Click next to proceed. And of course, if I try to drag anything else, because in theory, if I had not disabled those items, I'd be able to do that. But I do have a next button and I can now proceed with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.